So we're out here on the beaver kill and uh, Nancy's just doing a little fishing using a spay rod. It's actually a big salmon rod, but just fooling around. And uh, she actually caught a nice brown trout and uh, had two grabs before. And we're actually just using a little salmon fly, believe it or not, a little black bear orange butt with a couple strands of crystal flash. Actually kind of looks like a, it's actually supposed to look, imitate a shrimp, um, but it's just a small size 10 salmon fly that we've caught big Atlantic salmon on. And hey, she had three grabs, you know, here on the river fishing. But, uh, you know, all the takes have been in close here. She's using just a floating line. And I'll show you the fly that we're using. All the takes have been in close here, right, right on the edge. Um, you know, the water, water's cold. I mean, it's, it's no, you know, it's almost December now. And uh, we just had a big raise of water yesterday. It's coming down, it's starting to clear. But here's the fly, if it'll zoom in on it. Just a little, a little salmon fly. It's got a, a little gp tippet on the back little st couple strands of crystal flash and that's what that's what caught a brown trout and had two other grabs on so you know just goes to show you you know trout are opportunistic fish too they'll they, you know it doesn't have to be something that's necessarily represented in the river just something that looks like something alive right and they come and grab it so just keeping your fly wet keeping it swimming you know makes you know can work probably getting through the better stretch of water now but uh three good grabs there so lift sweep touch and go good single spay nance and just working you know just with a short line just working this inside edge here not even really bothering with that big high water out in the middle because right now these fish are in winter mode. They're coming in and they're lying on the inside here in this slow water um, out of that fast water. You know, the water temps are cold and the fish aren't out in that, in that big heavy water, especially with the water high now. They've slid in close here. Every fish that took were, were in relatively close. Again, everything's on a floating line. There's no weight whatsoever on the line. No, no split shot, no weight floating line and all you know three grabs in the middle of the winter so you know the idea that you have to be on the bottom to catch a fish is not true so just something to, to think about good cast touch and go single spay keep your uh anchor out further on this next cast nancy because you got a uh a little tree behind you right here this little so set your anchor out further by coming and cast. Okay, do a snap tee too. If you bring your rod, so if you bring your rod in close here and then you snap it, you snap it on an angle away. Yeah, and then keep the back hash short. That'll help you. You did actually catch that a little bit, but, but that would be the idea. Just poke it out front a little bit more. Don't don't make that deal quite so big. So you're saying... And just, that's it. And then poke it. There you go. See the D-loop, well, I should I like have, I, we'll do that again. My, my camera turned a little bit out in front. I don't know if they saw the back of the D-loop, but the D-loop, the D-loop was barely behind her there. Just go slow. And that's it. And then poke it out front. That's it. Good. See, and that's how you can keep keep a short D loop. It's just you set that anchor, you know, further out into the river. Nice, nice slow sweep. It doesn't take much with these Scandi lines to set up a D loop. You don't need to go fast or make a big giant back cast. Just easy, easy, and then just poke it. Boom. Nice cast. That's it. And I would say every grab came just about where the water dropped off. You can see where it's shallow here in front of us and then just outside right there laying in about, two, you know, foot and a half to two feet of water right there. That's where all the fish were. They weren't, she's been thrown out 
a lot of casts out into the middle there, but everything's been in close here. So, and that's probably where most of the fish are laying anyway at this point. A lot of them have slid inside, getting out of that. Yeah, it's starting, the temperature has dropped. A lot of times at this time of year, the key is to be out fishing, um, you know, in the middle of the day, when that window of, when those fish, what happens is the fish will turn on. And you don't need to get down, you know, if you're just gonna swing flies, you don't need to, it's not, we're not nymphing, we're swinging flies. So you don't need to put the fly down in their face. The idea is to make the fish chase the fly up, you know, up near the surface. Um, and the key is to do it when the fish are in the mood to bite. Um, once they turn off, they're gonna turn off. So right now, in the last like 20, 30 minutes, the temperature started to drop and they're probably turning off and they just won't bite. Um, but earlier before when that, it was a little bit moderated in temperature, it's still very cold, but it was the peak warmth of the day. And that's when those fish were turned on. So that's the key is, you know, get out and fish when those fish are turning on. So typically in the winter, late morning, especially, you know, 12 o'clock to two o'clock, I find to be a good winter window. Um, you know, get a, if you get a little overcast day with some warmth is a really good time to fish in the winter. Um, you know, sunshine is good in terms of heating the water and everything, but sometimes a, a, an overcast day with, with a war, like a warm overcast day is really good if you can get it. You're not going to always get it, but you know, sometimes it's early winter when it's bouncing back and forth, warm and cold, warm and cold. Um, if you can find one of those days, it's a good time to get out and do a little fishing. Nice snap tea. Huh? That looked good. Let's see that snap tea again. So watch how she, watch how she's just casting leisurely, not not forcing anything. Lift, snap, sweep, and cast. That's all. Not not casting hard. Even if she wanted to lengthen that cast 30, 40 feet, she could do the, exactly what she just did, and that line would go. As long as you have a positive stop on your forward cast, that line should jump off the rod. Well, thanks. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, hope to see you out in the river sometime.